Hi, welcome to the Gaussian distribution, or normal distribution, from the Poisson. In this lecture, we're going to derive the Gaussian distribution, also called the normal distribution, as a limit of the Poisson distribution. The Gaussian distribution arises in a wide variety of contexts. For a discussion of situations in which it pops up, and other reasons why it's important, you might want to check out why the Gaussian distribution, or normal distribution, is important, available on this channel. This derivation is going to assume that you're already familiar with the Poisson distribution, shown here. If you're not familiar with it, you might want to check out the Poisson statistics playlist on this channel. There you can find a discussion of when it arises, a derivation, and the characteristics of the distribution, for example, its standard deviation. You're also going to need some basic facts about exponentials, like the fact that x equals e raised to the power of the natural log of x, and that e to the x raised to the y power is equal to e to the xy. You're also going to need to know that the natural log of 1 over x is equal to minus the natural log of x. Additionally, we're going to use a series approximation for the natural log, so the log of 1 plus x is approximately equal to x minus 1 half x squared plus 1 third x cubed, etc., and that approximation is valid as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. And additionally, we're going to use Stirling's formula for factorials of large numbers. So you might want to briefly check out these things before watching this video. Okay, let's get started. So as we said, we're going to be using the Poisson distribution, written here as p of m given lambda. So here, it's a function of m, which is a non-negative integer, and it takes a parameter lambda, which is non-negative but doesn't have to be an integer. Let's briefly review where this comes up. So Poisson statistics describe situations where an event occurs randomly but has a constant probability of happening per unit time. We take the occurrences of the event to be completely independent or uncorrelated. So an occurrence, or lack thereof, of the event does not affect the probability for the event to occur in the future. Under these circumstances, if the average expected number of occurrences of the event in a certain time interval is lambda, the probability that the event actually occurs m times in that time interval is given by the Poisson distribution. Now, this expression holds for any values of lambda and m, as long as lambda is greater than or equal to zero, and m is an integer greater than or equal to zero. Now, we'll take the case where lambda and m are at least reasonably large, so at least of order a few times 10. We'll derive an approximate expression for the Poisson distribution that will hold for large values of lambda and m, and will be easier to work with than the Poisson expression that we have already. So basically, we're going to get rid of that nasty factorial. This exercise will yield the Gaussian distribution. So let's start with the Poisson distribution and take a look at that m factorial that's in the denominator. So let's apply Stirling's approximation to that m factorial. So Stirling's approximation tells us that n factorial is equal to the square root of 2 pi n times n over e, all raised to the n power, times 1 plus terms of order 1 over n. Now, since we're applying this to the m factorial in our expression, and because we said that m is reasonably large, we're going to ignore the terms that are of order 1 over m. So using the approximation that m factorial is approximately equal to the square root of 2 pi m times m over e, all raised to the m power, we can rewrite our expression for the Poisson distribution. So the m factorial in the denominator goes away, and we end up with, in the denominator, a factor of the square root of 2 pi m, and then additionally, a factor of e over m, all raised to the m power. And our original factors of lambda to the m and e to the minus lambda just carry through. Okay, then we can take the factor of e to the m that's in parentheses and combine that with our factor of e to the minus lambda to give us a factor of e to the m minus lambda out back. 
And additionally, we can take our factor of lambda to the m, and we can move that inside the parentheses, so now we have lambda over m, all raised to the m power. Okay, so next let's use the fact that x is equal to e raised to the power of the natural log of x. Okay, let's use that on the lambda over m that's in our expression for the Poisson distribution. So we're going to replace lambda over m with e to the natural log of lambda over m. Okay, now next we're going to use the fact that e raised to the power of x, all raised to the power of y, is equal to e to the xy. And so we have e to the natural log of lambda over m, all raised to the m power. And we're going to replace that with e to the m times the natural log of lambda over m. Okay, next we're going to rewrite this by slightly changing our notation. So let's define the quantity delta to be m minus lambda. We'll rewrite our expression in terms of delta instead of m. Now the standard deviation of the Poisson distribution is the square root of lambda. If you'd like more details on that, you can check out the video Mean and Standard Deviation of the Poisson Distribution. So the typical size of the absolute value of delta is about the square root of lambda. We said that lambda was fairly large, so we're going to take the absolute value of delta to be much less than lambda, and this lets us make some simplifying approximations. Now we can rewrite our expression in terms of delta instead of m using delta equals m minus lambda. So in our expression for p of m given lambda, there are four instances of m. And we're going to replace each one of them using our expression for delta. Okay, so first let's start with the two easy ones. Out front we have a 1 over the square root of 2 pi m. That gets replaced with 1 over the square root of 2 pi lambda plus delta. And at the very back of our expression, we have e to the m minus lambda. Now m minus lambda is just delta, so we can replace that with e to the delta. Okay, next we're going to take that factor of e to the m, natural log of lambda over m, and replace both of the m's with lambda plus delta. So that gives us e to the lambda plus delta times natural log of lambda over lambda plus delta. Okay, at this point we've rewritten our expression for p of m given lambda in terms of delta. Now we'll rewrite this slightly using the fact that the log of 1 over x is equal to minus the log of x. So we take the log in that exponent, the log of lambda over lambda plus delta, we put a minus sign in front of it, and we change it into the log of lambda plus delta over lambda. And then lambda plus delta all over lambda is equal to 1 plus delta over lambda. So in the end, we get that the middle factor in our expression is e to the minus lambda plus delta times the natural log of 1 plus delta over lambda. Okay, so we have our expression for the Poisson distribution written in terms of delta instead of m. So we said that the typical size of the absolute value of delta is the square root of lambda, and we're taking lambda to be fairly large. In this approximation, we'll only keep terms that are not suppressed by factors of 1 over lambda or delta over lambda, which is about the same size as 1 over delta, which is in turn about the same size as 1 over the square root of lambda. Note that delta itself is not taken as small, and also we need to keep terms that go like delta squared over lambda. Because delta squared is of a similar size to lambda, that ratio is of order 1. Okay, so let's start with the denominator in our expression, that square root of 2 pi times lambda plus delta. So we have this factor of lambda plus delta, and that's equal to lambda times 1 plus delta over lambda. Now the delta over lambda is suppressed compared to the 1 next to it, and we drop terms suppressed by delta over lambda, 
so it goes away. So after our first simplification, we have the same expression as we have before. We've just gotten rid of the delta in the denominator. Okay, so at this point we have an expression for p of m given lambda. Out front we have a factor of 1 over the square root of 2 pi lambda. Out back we have a factor of e to the delta. In between we have a somewhat complicated looking exponent. Let's look at the argument of that exponent. So it's minus lambda plus delta times the natural log of 1 plus delta over lambda. Now let's look at that log of 1 plus delta over lambda. At this point we can use a series expansion for the log of 1 plus x, where x has an absolute value of less than 1. It looks like this. The log of 1 plus x is approximately equal to x minus 1 half x squared plus 1 third x cubed, etc. So using that series expansion, we get that minus lambda plus delta times the natural log of 1 plus delta over lambda is approximately equal to minus lambda plus delta times delta over lambda minus 1 half delta over lambda squared. Here we've only kept the terms up to delta over lambda squared in the log. So we've only used the first two terms in the expansion of log 1 plus x. Okay, so here we've rewritten our expression from the previous slide. Now it might look like we've kept a small term in the brackets, specifically this delta over lambda squared. But this term might not be so small after we multiply it by the lambda plus delta that's out front. So we'll drop small terms after we do the multiplication. Okay, let's multiply the terms out. Okay, so here we've rewritten the expression from the previous slide, but this time we've put the first term in brackets in blue and the second term in brackets in red. And when we multiply the lambda plus delta times the blue term, we get a new set of blue terms, and when we multiply the lambda plus delta times the red term, we get a new set of red terms. So those new blue terms are delta plus delta squared over lambda, and the new red terms are minus one half delta squared over lambda plus delta cubed over lambda squared. Now we need to look at the terms to see which ones to keep. So we'll keep terms that are not suppressed by factors that go like 1 over lambda or by factors that go like 1 over delta or delta over lambda, which both go like 1 over the square root of lambda. So now let's look at the terms in blue. First we have a term delta. That's not small, so we keep that. Next, we have a term delta squared over lambda. Now delta goes like the square root of lambda, so this is also not small, and we keep that. Okay, next let's look at the terms in red. The first term in red looks like the second term in blue, and we've already decided to keep terms that look like that, so we keep that one. However, let's now look at the second red term. So this is delta cubed over lambda squared. Now because delta goes as the square root of lambda, this term goes as 1 over the square root of lambda. And we take that as small and drop it. Okay, so now we can combine the two delta squared over lambda terms and get that minus lambda plus delta times the natural log of 1 plus delta over lambda is approximately equal to minus delta plus one-half delta squared over lambda. Okay, so now we can put that approximation, which we just derived, back into our expression for p of m given lambda. So in our expression for p of m given lambda, we have the exponent e to the minus lambda plus delta natural log of one plus delta over lambda. We can now replace that with e to the minus delta plus one half delta squared over lambda. And now something very convenient happens. So the factor of e to the minus delta cancels with the factor of e to the delta that we have at the end of our expression. And we get that p of m given lambda 
is approximately equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi lambda e to the minus delta squared over 2 lambda. So we've arrived at our desired relation. P of m given lambda is approximately equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi lambda e to the minus delta squared over 2 lambda. Also, remembering that delta equals m minus lambda, we can also write this back in terms of m by replacing the delta squared in the exponent with m minus lambda squared. Now, a function of the form denoted here as f of x given mu and sigma is called a Gaussian, or normal distribution. So we can see that for largish lambda and m, the Poisson distribution approximates a Gaussian with mu equals lambda and sigma equals the square root of lambda. Note that we dropped terms of order 1 over the square root of lambda in this derivation. We can make this approximation explicit by multiplying our expression for p of m given lambda by 1 plus terms of order 1 over the square root of lambda. Now this means that, for example, if lambda equals 100, we would expect the error on this approximation to be of order 1 over the square root of 100, or about 10%. For lambda equals 1000, we would expect errors of order 3%. This is why we assumed fairly large lambda in this derivation. Okay, so now let's summarize. Here we've shown how the Gaussian distribution arises as the limit of the Poisson distribution for large lambda. The Gaussian distribution has a lot of uses. For some ideas on where it pops up, check out why the Gaussian distribution, or normal distribution, is important available on this channel. We'll also look at some of the mathematical features of the Gaussian distribution in other videos.